So I want to talk about one last thing before we leave complex numbers behind for a little while, which is the quadratic formula and how we use it to factor uh, polynomials when the only factors are complex. So right here I have the general formula, or a general uh, polynomial, a trinomial, which is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. And I don't know what a, b, and c are, but let's just assume they're numbers. And you have this variable x. Well, if you can write it in this form, then you know the solutions to it are going to be this. This is what the quadratic formula is all about. It says x is going to be equal to negative b plus or minus b square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. Uh, hopefully you have that drilled into you uh, from previous years. Let's go ahead and use this to figure out how to factor this example right here, x squared minus 4x plus 13. We're going to use the quadratic formula to help us out with that. So first things first, I'm just going to say, I'm just going to set and declare, I'm going to make this statement. I'm going to say uh, x squared minus 4x plus 13 equals 0. Okay, let's just presume it is 0. If that's the case, then I can come up with solutions. And the solutions are this, um, x equals negative b. Now, where's b? That's negative 4, right? So negative b is positive 4 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 16, minus 4 times a, a is 1, times c, c is 13, all divided by 2a, a is 1, so this is 2. Now, um, backing up a step, the quadratic formula is not something I recommend for factoring in general. But if you had tried to factor this thing, you wouldn't have had any success. Um, because it's what we call prime. There's no real factors that exist. You could try all day, it's not going to work. So as a last resort, we are turning to the quadratic formula. Now let's try to simplify this guy a little bit. x equals 4 plus or minus, uh, well, 4 times 13 is 52. So this is 16 minus 52, all divided by 2. Now 16 minus, here's where it gets hard, what's 16 minus 52? 16 minus 52 is negative 36, great. So x equals 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 36. There's one of those square roots of a negative that we hate so much. Uh, but now we know how to deal with it because we know complex numbers. So I would say x equals 4 plus or minus, what's the square root of 36? 6. What's the square root of negative 1? i. So there's your answer. That's what x equals. Or in other words, one of the solutions of x equals, here, let's simplify this a little bit. This is going to be 2 plus or minus 3i. Okay, so the first solution of x we'll call 2 plus 3i. And the second solution of x is 2 minus 3i. Now, these are solutions. This isn't factoring. Remember what we wanted. We wanted this thing factored. So keep this in mind. You can always write solutions in this form. <clears throat> x minus x1, x minus x2 equals 0. Uh, maybe you're more familiar with it in examples. x minus 2, x plus 5. I would say there's a factored polynomial. What are its solutions? And you would say, oh, well, of course, x equals 2 and negative 5. I'm doing the same here thing here. I'm just going backwards. So we're going to take solutions and turn it into factored form by taking this solution and putting it right here. And this solution is going to go right there. So let's write this out. It's going to be x minus uh, 2 plus 3i means x minus 2 minus 3i. And this one over here is x minus 2, but it's going to be a plus 3i because the negatives cancel out. Okay, equals 0. And if you remember early on, I said, let's just turn this whole thing into an equal zero, and I gave no justification for it. We don't need that. Uh, the important part is that um, there's no f of x here. I didn't say f of x was equal to anything. I'm just going to take this guy, uh, copy you, bring you down here. And we need to recognize that this and this right here are the same thing. Okay, they were both equal to zero in this example, which means they are both equal to each other. Okay, is there room? There is not room. I am a big writer. So let's do some magic. There we go. So we have 
a fully factored <laughs> a fully factored polynomial here, but it has complex roots. Now, I don't think you could have factored this guy without the quadratic formula, but maybe I'm wrong. You can always try it if you want. Um, one thing I also want to point out at this point, if you take a look back here, um, right where we found these roots from the quadratic formula, these guys, I'm interested in these. Do you notice that they are conjugates of each other? The quadratic formula has a tendency to produce complex conjugates. And it's not a coincidence, because if you look closely at the quadratic formula, it has, it has this thing right here. See that plus and minus sign? That is what causes complex conjugates to appear out of the complex, out of the quadratic formula. And this leads to something else called the complex conjugate root theorem. This is a theorem in mathematics that says, if I tell you that one of the solutions to an equation is this guy, let's say I just give you, you know what, here, it's getting crowded up there. I'm just going to make something up down here, show you what I mean. f of x equals, I don't know. But I do know that one of the solutions is uh, 14 plus 5i. Okay, I just made it up. And I want to know what's another solution. Well, by the complex conjugate theorem, it must be 14 minus 5i. If you have one complex root of a polynomial, then by the theorem that I just mentioned above, you must also have another complex root, which is the conjugate of the first. That's what the theorem tells us.